Hello, everybody. And this is presentation about low code, no code. Low code is a no code is a new development paradigm. How does it work and which productivity levels should be assumed? We go through the goals for the presentation right now. And uh, the first goal is to present low code, no code paradigm and the rationale behind him and the way it works for developing a mobile app as an example. Then understand the potential savings in terms of efforts, cost, and their impact on productivity values. And finally, we discuss the pros and cons of such type of approach with a mid-long term view. Uh, right now, we go across the agenda um, for citizen development, which are main challenges and opportunities. Then we, we see a bunch of uh, stuff about low code, no code. Uh, first of all, uh, no code is new way to develop application with less effort and higher productivity. And then we take a look at the uh, no, low code, no code path. Then we run across the demo and uh, we discuss uh, some sizing and estimation issue. And when that, we end up with the wrapper. And we start talking about citizen development. And on the left hand side, there is a, a, an article from Gartner about the importance of citizen development and citizen and it. On the right hand side, uh, there are citizen developers and uh, professional developers as well. And uh, the number of professional uh, developers, as you can see, is far smaller than the, poten the potential number of citizen developers. Citizen developers are solution focused, instead, uh, professional developers are technology focused. Who is a, a citizen developer? A citizen developer is not a professional developer who gets paid to develop apps or systems, but name it in the sense that. Developing is not their primary function. The citizen development could be the sales manager, the business leader, or the software tester. Down below, there is a bunch of links you can get. The first link is about the article we saw before. And the, the, the last one is about the glossary, about the definition of citizen developer. You can get more information at the Gartner website. Uh, we go through we go through some um, development facts, statistics, and trends. More in general, no code platform allows the users to create application solution fully based on a visual interface and drag and drop. Low code, on the other hand, uses better coding and both type of platform make the making of soft and solution for users simple. No code citizen development can be done by business users with no coding skills. On the other hand, developers with good coding skills are needed to build solutions on local platforms. Then, no code local platform to provide interface grade security. Okay, we take a look at some trend statistics and facts. Garden study reveals by 2024 the number of activities citizen developers are large enterprise with at least four times the number of professional developers. Then Microsoft anticipated that 500 million apps it expected will be created over the next five years. 550 million will be designed on no code local platform. We go through a couple of benefits and challenges as well. The first is about the benefits. A uh, no-code local platform can reduce development time by 19%. Forrest found also that no-code local platform helps developers make cloud native more than 10 times faster. Okay, we can go through the challenges. An organization concerned about working with no-code local vendors and organization are also concerned about scalability on the, the apps created. Down below, there is a link to the app. On right and on left hand side, there are uh, some reason um, uh, about uh, main reason for using low code, no code uh, uh, de development platform. Among them, accelerate digital transformation, increase responsibility, responsibility to the business. On right hand side, 
we are my reason for not using or considering local development platform. Among them, a uh, lack of knowledge about low code platform or concern about locking with a no code, low code vendor. This is a kind of a strategy from vendors. And down below, there is a link to the, uh, to the site. Gartner also believes that over the next three years, 70% of new applications in a company are going to be developed by using the low code. This is the magic quadrant for Gartner, from Gartner. And as you can see, there are four quadrants, the leader's quadrant, the challenger's quadrants, the niche player, and the visionary as well. Among leaders, we have Manix, Microsoft ServiceNow, Salesforce, OutSystem, just to mention a few. On right-hand side, you have the link to Microsoft website, and there is also a report coming from Forrester. Uh, down below, there is a link to best local development platform in 2022. There is also a link. We can see uh, some uh, few of them, uh, such as Appian or Manix. Uh, uh, instead of writing code, the local platform allows to choose and configure components by simply drag dragging and dropping what we need. As you can see, or on left hand side, we have the, the Python code. On right hand side, we have the Power Apps application done by using simple dragging and drop what we need. Okay, uh, for our demo, we use a couple of uh, uh, products coming from Microsoft, such as Power Apps and SharePoint. Power Apps is a platform as service solution to be used the ability to build mobile application and a current on a range of platforms, including Android, iOS, or Windows, in addition to almost any browser. On right hand side, we have SharePoint. What is SharePoint? It's a document management platform that helps a company manage data, documents, reports, and other content that is important to use business process. And uh, we have uh, some uh, Microsoft uh, Power Apps use case. So uh, mainly uh, Power Apps uh, use uh, for review and inspection, asset management, schedule scheduling, event management, expenses approval, exploring, onboarding, lead management, field service, and return to workplace. We have an extensive experience in uh, building application for scheduling and field services as well. Down below, there is uh, a link to the use case web page. Microsoft provides also real world interesting use cases uh, ca coming from Toyota, Coca Cola, Ernest Young, and degrees of change as well. Uh, it's so easy to build an application and uh, using power app first of all you can log in and uh, otherwise if you are not registered you can uh, uh, you, uh, you can start for free once logged in uh, apologize but i can't see the whole uh, the whole screen okay once logged in, we can start from existing data. At or, or we can build an app from zero and add that to the app later on. Or we can just use sample apps for the template provider. Okay, we can start from blank, first option. Then or we can start from data. As you can see, we have SharePoint, Excel Online, SQL Server, Dataverse, as data source, and so on and so forth. Then finally, we have the star form template option. And uh, uh, there are frame, but many pre-built templates available for Microsoft. Some of the available templates for Canvas apps include Auto Office, Suggestion Box, Inventory Management, To Do List, Case Management, To Leave Request, Help Desk, Onboarding Task, Employee uh, a, a Engagement Service. Just uh, a few uh, for our application, we use the Service Desk uh, template. 
there are also many examples available from the community. Down below, there is a, a app, feedback gallery. You can find more uh, a sample application you can use for your application as well. Uh, uh, there is also a learning section a documentation. The learning section is within the Power App. You can find guided learning uh, topics and communities also. And down below, there is a Power Apps overview you can, uh, you can get from Microsoft the website. Uh, more in general, Microsoft Platform is a group of products offered by Microsoft to develop and build a complex business solution, aligned and draw data visualization, automate the business process, or build a virtual agent for communication. We run across each of them, and uh, first uh, we analyze Power Apps. Power Apps is uh, Enable user to build application in easy way with a drag and drop feature without any coding. Then we have uh, the uh, Power Automate, a service that allows user to automate workflow within your organization. And uh, then we have Power BI's business analytics solution that let us visualize our data and share insights across our organization. Last but not least, we have Power virtual agent. Let's create chatbot can answer question from customer, employee, or visitor to website. Um, also, this um, here there are some books about citizen developer and uh, power apps as well. And down below there is a bunch of links to uh, to the Microsoft Power Apps documentation and a Microsoft Power FX overview. Uh, Power FX is a scripting language. We will see in a minute. Power App, we, then we have Power Automate documentation and Power BI documentation. Um, uh, these slides will be available for download soon, so you can navigate uh, both to the Amazon website where you can find more information about Power Apps uh, cookbook and Power Apps, uh, uh, more in general, Power Apps uh, books. And uh, you can take also a look to the Microsoft documentation about the Power Apps and Power BI as well. Uh, right now, we, we run across a, a simple demo. The demo is about an expensive structure. And first of all, we start from data and we choose a SharePoint list as data source, as you, you can see. The application is done for mobile devices. And uh, we start, as I said, we start from blank. Now the ex expenses are in SharePoint. There are four columns. So there are expenses category, expenses description, expenses date, expenses amount as well. And uh, following the sample data are in. Uh, we use a wizard in order to build our app. And uh, this is uh, the, our app done and uh, within the Power Studio environment. Power Apps create, creates for us an app with three with data in and three screen of form. The browser screen, the detail screen, and uh, the edit screen. Now the apps are launched. We see some piece of functionality include the refresh button, the source button in alphabet order, the plus button sign to add new expense, the search box to type in an expense in order to filter the results and the list of all expenses as well. Uh, on selecting item right here, we can get to the, experience, the expenses page where we can view, delete or edit the content. Finally, we can create new expenses and new expenses looks like this. This is the edit screen. Uh, 
this is uh, the form we use. Uh, Marco, we, we are not seeing the slides. We are yet on the books. Please uh, check your, your screen. Okay. You were freeze there for us on slide 19. 19, okay. Can you? Now we are on the demo. Uh, okay, okay. 20. Apologize, uh, guys, and uh, I start from the demo, the demo slides. Apologize. And okay. as, uh, I, as, as I said, uh, we start from data and we choose a share list as data sources. And this application is specific for mobile devices. And uh, the data is in right now, and uh, the, this is a list, a SharePoint list. There are four columns, expenses category, expenses description, expenses date, expenses amount as well. And the following, the sample data are in. And uh, this is the wizard in order to build our app. And, um, Finally, the, this is the, 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 the app within the Power App Studio environment. So, uh, as I said, there are, okay, as I said, the Power Apps create an app with some data and three screen of form the browser screen, the expenses screen, and the screen. We, uh, the, uh, the, now the app is launched. We see some piece of functionality include the refresh button, the, pl uh, the plus, uh, uh, the sort button in alphabetical order, the plus button to add new expenses, the search box uh, in order to type in expenses in order to filter the result and the list of expenses. On selecting item, we can get the expenses page where we can view delete or edit the content. Uh, using this form, we can edit the screen. Uh, we can uh, create new expenses and using this kind of screen. Uh, SharePoint right now is updated. Uh, we use uh, this form in order to add more information and more data. So uh, now the uh, new expenses is in. Uh, once we have the first release ready, we can enhance it. Uh, let's have a quick look at the interface. On the top of the user's interface, we can choose from any available controls to use in the form, such as button, text, and chart, and so on and so forth. On the left-hand side, we can work on form and object use. They can be removed or changed. On the right-hand side, we can change all the property related to the current object, for example, button or text field. Uh, with a few clicks, we can enhance uh, look and fill out the new information. As you can see, uh, we change the background color and we add some more uh, fields like uh, the expenses data, uh, the expenses data. Uh, what is Microsoft Power? Power Effects is local language for expressive logic across the Metro Power Flat and is based on Spreadsheet X Formula Excel. If you click, you can get more information from Microsoft website about Formula Reference. And we go across a couple of examples and we go across the formula stuff. And if you Okay, this is the formula. Uh, this is the formula bar. We, uh, the formula enables the application to check if any uh, field is empty or not. If uh, uh, any field is empty, uh, a warning message pops in. We use the is blank function as you can see. Uh, one more is, example is uh, about adding a, a field, a summary field. There are seven expenses. The total amount is something like uh, 1,000 euros. 
we set the tax property of the, this field to the following formula. There are count rows, expense, a total amount, a sum. Uh, we use a couple of formulas, as I said, uh, related to the tax properties, such as count rows, a uh, sum uh, function. The count rows function counts the number of records in a table. The last example is about showing a warning icon. If amount is above a threshold, for example, let's say 500 euros, a warning icon is shown, we set the visible of a property of icon to the, uh, the following formula. It means that the if expenses is greater than 500, uh, uh, an icon is shown. And uh, summing up all the stuff we saw so far, and we are the browser screen and answer that they also there is a detailed screen and it is screen as well. Once we are completed the app, we can save it on the cloud, publish it on share among, among our stakeholders. It, it means we can share it among uh, uh, people in our organization. Uh, we have quite a few running uh, options, such as uh, run the apps on Android and iOS, run the apps within Teams, and run the app within uh, a web browser. That's all, folks. Uh, thanks for watching. Luigi, go ahead, please. Thank you, Marco. <clears throat> so five minutes for closing the presentation because it was very interesting to, for the audience to see how is it easy to create an application with something visual as well as Marco presenting right now. Now the second part of the presentation with a few slides concluding is about some values for sizing this application using Ifpag FPA version 4.3 without functional security. Here are the numbers and the values for uh, final results of uh, 37 function points. And next slide, also using a different approach, including, as you can see here, make a further click, Marco, also uh, using the functional security approach. That means to count also the rows in red in the counting sheet. That implies, according to a presentation valid for the certification extension program, by ITPAG in Cleveland five years ago to count some more data and some more processes from the login to the logout, uh, adding complexity, inner complexity to the elementary process, moving the counts from 37 to 97. Next slide. And this is just for making and to derive uh, some numbers about the functional sizing. And so imagine to add this number to possible cases. This is uh, a small application uh, created in four or six hours, according to the two different views without or with functional security. And these are the numbers about the nominal productivity and PDRs values with the, the, those unit of measures above in the first row, uh, according to, to the way you, you prefer using man hours or man days. The, the consideration, the thoughts you can see here, uh, in the slides are about the assumption that needs to be part of the contractual notes shared by, by the two contractual parts, a product owner, a client, a customer, and as well as a development team. It's important for us in uh, ISBSG to make clear more and more that PDR stands for the project delivery rate and is not the productivity, is the opposite. One against the nominal productivity. And the opposite, the productivity is one against the PDR value. And more information are in this white paper included there. The other important time is about the time, not only the size for declaring productivity levels, because it's very important to declare in reports, which is the time unit of measure you want to assume hours or man days. Sometimes it is not written, it can 
pose confusions in the business decision moving from these numbers. Another very important point for determining uh, a nominal uh, productivity level or a PDR level is to understand this effort to which uh, software development life cycle phases is referred to. Because in this case, the effort Marco employed for, spent for creating this application was mostly for creating something from scratch. And eventually, even if you can add more effort for some business goals and tasks, the productivity using this kind of approach is very, very high. Next slide. And so it's an opportunity because sometimes you can be a technical people looking to the technical staffs but if you are a businessman at sea level, you would like to, to see and to understand which could be the nominal productivity or the PDR level. And for instance, in the current ISBSG DND repository containing more than 10,600 projects, there is a set of projects, a data set using, click, make a click, please, about uh, some uh, projects. Uh, measured using the NESMA enhancement way for function points with the 27 projects using the out system programming language or environment that was one of the ones presented before by Marco. In this case, make a click please, it's possible to, to add more than six NESMA function points as a medium value above the nominal productivity of 1.1664 uh, mandates about the PDR and mega click, please. This is a very without uh, uh, putting out. Sorry, one uh, one slide before again. Thank you. The without keeping out from the, these uh, statistics any projects. This kind of uh, out system size projects have a correlation very very high. But it's important also to note that in this case the, the big constant in the equation is quite low that means very few uh, non-functional requirement related effort in this formula of course for those of you uh, using typically java angular or something like that uh, trying to figure out more than 6 10 17 function point per mandate could seem uh, could seem to be something very very strange uh, please next slide. And so some conclusion because I, I just missed two seconds for closing the presentation. Some uh, some business messages can be this one. Please, Marco, put all the slide uh, vis uh, visualized in order to discuss it. It's important uh, a sort of uh, back to the future because for those of you starting to be a programmer as i was also very very many years ago the visual way is still on the uh, right on the way and it can uh, allow us as companies to save more and more money anybody using the citizen development buzzword can be a programmer without having any uh, programming skills this kind of low code no code environments can represent anyway a good opportunity still today for being more productive according to certain premises of course and for the business it's fundamental to do not lose in a BizOps context the sharing of information between the higher the roles and living in the management part of the company with the technicians with the DevOps teams in the more operative part of the company since uh, we are here just for concluding in the isbsg uh, yearly conference it confidence this is the 10th edition from we started in uh, 10 years ago in brazil in rio de janeiro it's important to conclude the speaking about size and productivity of course the size should be more and more uh, measured not only using the functional drivers but please keep a look also to non-functional sizing units that can be ispac snap as well as other iso metrics in the iso 25000 family about the software quality about the data quality too the impact on productivity 
is uh, something or PDR is something that uh, needs necessarily to take into account uh, several drivers in order to make a comparison uh, using Apple uh, compared with apples and uh, oranges with oranges. And so the ISBSG, DND or MNS repositories, two different repositories you can buy for a very low, low amount of money per year can contain very important information to allow your projects to have some benchmarks data as well as for instance is required also in some projects by the European community. Some of you know the ULISA projects from the European commissions and ISBSG has been promoted there in that piece. And so just going to the next slide with a couple of Dilbert's strips two or three uh, it's important to go for agile to go for devops to have a very good programmers but to have also the boss of your company for your projects that can be these people in uh, with the uh, strange uh, hairs uh, in this in these strips uh, that should be aware about what technicians are going to do because only in a bizops in a devops environment where information are properly shared the good information can go on providing and uh, assuring a good level of success to our companies projects and stakeholders thanks again for your attention sorry for this couple of minutes uh, more for our presentation and uh, uh, for any question please write and then we'll uh, we'll write answers in case uh, without keeping out our time to the next presenters. Thank you.